Alright, hi everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Manshu, and we are continuing understanding JavaScript on our Lightning Web Components Masterclass. In the last tutorial, we started off understanding variables in JavaScript, how to declare them, how to use them, and probably construct a sentence or two. And we had some five very easy to do assignments that I wanted you to do and share. I hope you were able to do this and without any issues. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the next tutorial, and that's about arrays. Alright, so we did touch base on arrays a bit in our previous tutorial to use it as a variable. However, we'll understand a bit more about it. Okay, how arrays work and what all it is it. So, uh, first of all, I would like to take you to this orange mention that I've done to think like this. So, array is more like a playlist on your phone. Alright, each song in the playlist is an item in the array. You can add, remove, rearrange, find any song in that playlist. Correct? So, to make an analogy, you can think that, you know, if you if you use any kind of music streaming platforms like Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, anything, uh, you have, you can create and curate your own playlist, which contains a list of songs that you'd like to hear, right? So you can consider that playlist as an array. Because why? It is a collection of songs. It is a list of songs that you have isolated together. Can you create multiple playlists? Yes. So that is to multiple arrays. All right. And each song is basically a type of data that you're storing inside that array. Okay. It's an item in the array. Okay. Now that item could be a song. So in an array, the item could be a string, a boolean, a map, an object, anything else, any, any kind of data type. Okay. So that's the whole idea behind arrays. Now to talk about the definition arrays are a way to store multiple pieces of data in a single variable. Now the reason why arrays were made, if you think, think, a bit deeper why did people invent array right so it would be very difficult to actually track and tag things that could be clubbed together right so think of this you work in companies right you are given you are assigned teams right teams are nothing but a collection of resources who work on a certain project right what if everyone was independent everyone was a resource everyone was you know um, uh, doing work here and there it would be a bit disorganized right and maintenance and management would be a bit difficult so it is always better to club certain set of uh, resources together certain set of data together to get an output and that's how arrays also come in picture okay you might have a list of things that you want to do you might have a list of uh, you know goals you can club them together into an array and you can store all of that information together. So if you have to refer them, you don't have to refer five variables. You can only refer one variable that will contain your entire information, which is handy. Okay. So arrays are a way to store multiple pieces of data in a single variable, in a single variable. So you can think of an array like a list or a collection variable where you can keep related items together. Okay. If I were to ask you, can you give me three favorite colors and store them in an array? You can do that. Right? Your five favorite songs, your 10 favorite movies, your three favorite actors, all of that can be clubbed together. So related items getting clubbed together into a single collection is called an array. Okay? For those of you who already know Apex and for those of you who don't, please start with Apex first so that this would be very easy for you to grasp. Okay? For Lightning Web Components. So arrays, you used list and set in Apex, right? Very same concept. You have arrays in JavaScript. Okay? They store multiple values in a single variable. That's the second point. And each value is stored at a specific value called index. Okay. Now what is an index? If I were to tell you, give me your top five favorite uh, Bollywood movies or give me your top three uh, best scenes of all time or give me your top four favorite cartoons of all time. Right. You would tell me number one, number two, number three and number four. Right. You'd give a number to it. You would give a ranking to it. Right. Similarly, because you are on a on cloud or you are on a computer you're not on your memory it's computer's memory you have to actually store that information somewhere right and for the machine or for the system to know where should i store it it uses this index concept okay so the first position is always the zeroth position because that's where it starts okay it's not the first position the first position is always the zeroth po position and that's where your first element sits your top rank, your first rank, it sits on the zeroth position. Okay. And then you have one, two, three, and four. So if you have five items in your array, you will have zero, one, two, three, and four as the index. It would be zero to four. Arrays index always starts with zero. 
all right so y is zero because before that there's no space so for something to move one step you have to start from zero right that's basically the center of the graph coordinates that that we have if you have to move one one step towards one, towards the right you need to start from somewhere what is that somewhere that is zero correct so the zeroth index is the first position and then the first position is the second index all right i mean the i, I messed it up the zeroth position is the first index and the first position is the second index so it would be 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 if you are about if you are trying to say or keep five items okay we'll look at examples that would give you a bit more clarity but index always starts with zero all right and it is true for all programming languages it will always start from zero and i hope you understand why okay because you need some space you need to define a specific space that from here if you take a step it would be one step so zero plus one would be one right that's why now array creation can be done either using the new notation or using these square brackets. So there are two annotations but we will we'll go through it and you can use anything like it's all the same there's nothing different. Alright great. Let's talk about the kind of array methods that you can use alright and that would give us an idea of how to leverage and use arrays wherever possible. Right so I am going to go back to programmers and what we are going to do is we are going to basically try out these methods all right and i mean these functions that we can use to actually leverage and use arrays all right so let's get rid of everything here and if i have to declare a variable which is of type type array i would go ahead and do something like this all right this is how you can just declare a, a variable first of all and you can assign it an empty array value okay if you were to print it out and let's say we just print this variable out let's see what does it show if I say run it does not give anything it's empty okay however if I put one element here right what do I what what happens if I say run it shows me the array element with one in one value right so you have this one value what if I wanted to store something else if I wanted to store true comma false can I do that you can store boolean what if I wanted to store numbers can I do that I can do that what if I wanted to store number and boolean can I do that you can do that right so this is an this is not strongly typed meaning you can actually do these kind of things also but how much would it make sense for your use case is actually you need is what you need to see but ideally it would be good if you can keep related items together okay but again no hard and fast rule why because JavaScript is not strongly typed. However, say Apex is. So you don't have to worry about these kind of issues. Okay. All right. Now let's go back to the options that we have. So how do you really, um, okay, before jumping into this, let me talk a bit more about the index. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just add probably some numbers. Okay. Right? I have five numbers okay so how many elements do you think are in the list there are five elements right so what I can do is I can actually check what is my first element and and what is the value how do I do that I can say my first array var I can put the square brackets and I can use the index the zeroth index this is the zeroth index this is the fourth index if I say run this will give me 190 which is the zeroth index the index always starts with zero right so the first element is always on the zeroth index how about the third element what would be the index always number minus one so it will be the second third element so three minus one is two run you will get 327 what about the fifth element what would be the index it would be four right if i say run it will give me three, triple nine awesome what if I wanted to access something that is not existing? What if I say the fifth index, but there's nothing on the fifth position? If I say run, it says 190, 327, 999, but this is undefined. So it does not really exist. All right, so it does not exist, so it's giving you an undefined. All right. Now let's look at these methods. Before that, one more method, how do you kind of determine the size of an array? Very similar to Apex, you can simply say, my first array var dot length. All right, so if I say run, this will give me the number of elements that are in my list or in my array. So dot length is that particular method. 
okay and this is how you write it dot length okay so in uh, apex you usually do something like this right because it's a function but here you can actually directly access the property by using dot and you can just put it here dot length okay we'll talk about when you need to you know use a function but this is how you would access the size of an array dot length all right great now let's talk about these specific uh, array methods i want you to know this so that you can use it and leverage it in your lightning web components or you know javascript so how do you add items using the basically you have to use the push method okay let me see if i can highlight it yeah so how do you add items so this is an array correct but i've already predefined items here how do i add another item here what you can do is you can simply say my first array var dot push so that's more like telling the system that i want to add something new so this is one 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 okay and i'm going to print the array every time i do something on it something like an operation okay so i'm going to print it out so let's get rid of all of these and i'm going to show you what happens when you push an element so you see this value has been added at the end it has been appended at the end make sense awesome how do you want to actually how, what if you wanted to add something in the beginning can you do that yes you can do that by using the unshift method okay and i'm going to say 101 and i'm going to print it again so if you notice now the value is 101 which is right at the beginning it's not at the end but it is in the beginning all right let me get rid of some values here and now let's run it again so you see 190 at the beginning push added it at the end unshift added it at the beginning make sense awesome how do you remove the last item let's say you have a set of elements let's say you have a set of songs in your playlist but you don't like the last song that's added you want to remove it so can you do that yes you have a method for it what is that method that method is called pop so i'm going to say pop and i'm going to say let's see what happens if i put a value there so you see double one double one has been removed it has been popped out so if you see the naming con convention of these methods is very straightforward i want to push something so push it at the end all right i want to add something in the beginning so can you shift everyone can you shift a bit and i will add something in the beginning so i'll just do an unshift i want to pop something out of it so i'll just pop out the last element okay how about you want to remove the first element so i want to say shift so that's the opposite of unshift i'll just say 101 needs to be shifted so if i say run you will notice that 101 has been shifted double one double one has been popped out so in a very quick time timing of let's say five minutes we have learned five to seven methods right here that are helpful for arrays okay again don't think too much just understand okay this is how it works and this is what i need that's the idea we don't want to master the entire uh, javascript uh, book we want to actually be smart enough to use it for lightning web components okay so the next item is how to find the index of a specific element all right so this is also a straightforward uh, method and what you need to do is you can simply like let's say we log it directly we don't do two steps at a time we are going to say console.log my first array var dot index of so i can simply use this method called index of and i can ask like let's say my number that i want to search is nine triple triple nine what what index is it on is it on the it is on the first index okay what if i ask for the first value what index is it in it is in the zeroth index so zero one two elements okay what if I ask something that does not exist in the list? What does it do? Right? If I say 201, it is not in the list. What does it return? It returns minus 1. So a very important understanding here is that if you want to check in an array if a value exists or not, you can check the index of property. Correct? If it returns minus 1, you can say this value does not exist in the list or in the array. Make sense? So this is where you can use this method okay what you can do is for these kind of tutorials that i'm doing you can actually make notes of certain methods that you are seeing here like if you are a pen and paper person or a digital note creator you can actually note these down okay or when you are solving some problems you can actually refer to the online uh, what do you call it the online uh, references and you can see and understand which method to use 
So let's say what I can do is when I'm solving a problem, what I can do is index of JavaScript. So I can say find index of, I do not index of, find index of an element, JavaScript. So this is a good prompt. So you can actually look at some, uh, what do you call it, some references. W3Schools is a very good library for uh, JavaScript related tools. I also refer it quite often. But if you want to look at the, you know, core, core setup, you can look at the MDN web. But let's say we open W3Schools, you can actually find all the methods here. See, a lot of methods are available for arrays. So you see, this is arrays. Okay, you can find all of it. However, are all of it needed for you to know immediately? No, as in when you have this requirement, you actually try it out. Okay, what I want to do is I want to just simply search find or maybe index, you see, find index is there. Anything with index of, like you can actually search index of. Okay, so something with index, we can actually see, huh? fruits dot index of and you are actually checking what is the index of apple so if you look at this example what do you think would be the answer the index of apple is 0 1 2 so it would be resulting 2 all right so there are a lot of options here a lot of methods that you can actually look at very casually whenever you have time to learn or you can always come through an use case like you have a use case to solve then you go to that document and refer it okay Awesome. So that was the find the index of a specific element. Now what about find an item in an array? How can you do that? So what you can do is you can say, let's say you want to search whether the variable contains 99 or not. Okay. So what can I do? I can simply say console.log. I'm using console.log to print it out. Okay. But ideally you will just be using this dot includes. Let's see if includes work or not. I'll say 201 and I'll say run it. So you see, it says false, it does not include. So it's very simple, see, does my collection include this particular value? No, it does not, so it says false. But does it include nine, triple nine? Can I run it and check? Does it include? Yeah, it does, so you can get true. Where is it helpful to find whether a specific value is, is a part of your collection or not? Okay, so same things, basically the things you would be doing with collections is more like checking whether it contains a value, whether it needs a value, whether you need to remove a value, whether you need to find a value, these kind of things you have to do more or less, correct? So these are good enough functions for you to do that. That's why I just put these four or five, you know, five or six methods. But if you want to go deep dive, go to, you know, JavaScript documentation and try out maybe another five methods. All right, great. I like to stop this tutorial here and in the next one we'll actually solve a sample question. Cool? Alright, I will see you in the next one. Bye.